What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. So we're talking about a few different topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Pretty Little Liars Season 2. We'll be talking about Halloween Ends, going over a theory related to a sequel that could happen. Talking about Scream 6 and also talking about uh, Chucky and a future crossover movie that could be in store for us if it plays out or if it even comes to fruition. Just kick it off though with Pretty Little Liars. So we know that we got Pretty Little Liars Original Sin early this year. Season 2 is coming. That was confirmed as well. And Season 2 seems to be dropping the original sin subtitle in favor of this new subtitle that was revealed by deadline titled summer school so you'll have pretty little liars summer school being the second season title and it is still going to be tied to the first season that we got original sin also the news report stated that jordan gonzalez has been pushed up to a series regular for season two and if you need a refresher on who that is, this was Minnie's love interest. I think that the character's name was Ash. They were the love interest for Minnie throughout the first season. Now, being pushed up to a series regular in the second season, nothing wrong with that. But I'm curious if this season will have any ties to Original Sin, considering that they have officially dropped that. Or if we're taking, like I, like I talked about kind of another video I did this an anthology route are we going to take the anthology route because i wouldn't be completely against it but i would prefer a linear story with our returning stars admittedly though season one does end pretty wildly with it being up in the air about what happens after that i think i don't remember who opened the door but uh the character of archie who was revealed to be a bust in and presumably just causes havoc in that house i would assume so with how wildly that one ended Maybe they are going to take the approach of, you know, saying that that is a one and done and season two will restart with a whole new mystery. Same cast, but different characters that they're playing this time around for the Millwood shenanigans. If it's even set in Millwood, I hope I'm wrong because I was looking forward to Lucy Hale potentially returning as Arya since we know at the end of the first season, she and Ezra had been revealed to have gained custody of Imogen's baby. But we'll see how this all works out for them. Just to touch on Halloween Ends. Halloween Ends is not getting a sequel for now, but let's talk about how this could potentially work. I want to briefly just share my thoughts on this idea of Corey returning for Allison, like how Michael would return for Lori. I've seen this talked about online in a few different places and debated, so I just want to share my thoughts on it. Now, of course, if Corey were to have been revealed alive, or if they had just simply not killed him, because you could have definitely done something like this. The difference with Corey returning for Allison as opposed to Michael returning for Lori is that Corey is returning out of what he perceives as love, even though it's really just obsession. Because remember, he said, if I can't have her, no one can. And this narrative would also require him to somehow, again, be alive. I've seen so many people debate on this and how they can make this work if they want to completely go the anthology route and have it be Corey dressing up as Michael since Michael is dead. I will say I'd probably be more impressed if this was done many years later and a major plot twist of this film could be it's a standalone story that is secretly tied to Halloween. So like you could have Andy Matichak return, but maybe she's changed her name a la Lori in H2O. So that way it doesn't give away the surprise. And then as the movie plays out and as the killer who isn't even dressed as Michael is revealed, we slowly learn that this movie that doesn't even have the Halloween title is secretly a sequel to Halloween Ends. I think that would play out quite phenomenally if executed well and if you do it a few probably several years later where you have Andy Matichak cast in a role under the title of a movie that obviously would throw you off track because it's not even associated with Halloween but then the movie itself would have some secret ties to Halloween it could be like a standalone type of anthology movie where ultimately it's revealed that Corey Cunningham is back for Allison he's trying to kill her he's out to kill whoever she's with now and he's been obsessed with her ever since but again I think they have ruined that by killing Corey and Halloween ends but let me know do you guys think that that would be something that could work out in a future sequel if they wanted to go that route do you think that sounds cool that they could keep it under wraps and have it slowly peeled back when you watch the movie let me know down in the comment section below just to touch on Scream 6, Scream 6, the production, and more specifically Paramount, has started cracking down on the leaks, and I'm mostly, again, referring to Paramount. Paramount has started removing posts from Instagram and copywriting or just, like, you know, pointing out that certain posts should not be posted because it's not ours to be posting because they're coming from leakers and accounts that are leaking images. So if you're not trying to be hammered by the system then remove those images asap because i can only imagine if it's on instagram it's going to slowly tr trickle its way into 
Twitter eventually. I know RJ in the past has already told us that these le these leaks were legit, but now this also double confirms that, which means that the Uni Horror account needs to stop leaking things, and they are not in cahoots with the team behind Scream Six. They are again just leaking things from someone who I would imagine is associated with the team, but they're feeding an account images, and this person is just leaking them when they shouldn't be. Viewer Anon also just to get away from that something more exciting. Viewer Anon has also shared these images from from a deleted scene of Scream 3 apparently that would have given some needed context on Roman's multi-capable voice changer that uh that I I thought I thought that was pretty cool to see these images. I'll also do a separate video to discuss this further and how I could see it playing into Scream 6 if they wanted to revive the voice changer. Roman's voice changer has been considered a negative plot device by many, and I'm kind of torn between it because on the one hand, it doesn't make sense for the time, but now, many years later, it was a piece of technology that was ahead of its time. But still, given that it was not set in the year of 2016 and onward. It was set in the year 2001 or so. It is something, again, that's still far-fetched, something that's unrealistic. And at least I could help. If This context here would have at least helped me suspend my disbelief a little bit further with how advanced that voice changer was, even though an aspect of it is cool. <laughs> so just to wrap this all up with Chucky, Don Mancini has teased, he teased this in an interview with Comic Book, that we could see some type of crossover movie in the past he's talked about doing like chucky versus freddy krueger where you have chucky in springwood i guess and him and chucky competing for the most kills who could get the most kills while awake versus freddy getting kills in the sleep or in in their sleep so i would like to see something possibly play out where we see chucky versus Candyman because i believe Candyman is a universal pictures property other people, of course, would love to see Chucky versus Leprechaun, but I think that belongs to Lionsgate. So you'd have to have some other things worked out there. Similar, similar to how they had to have several things worked out before we ultimately finally got Freddy versus Jason, because Freddy and Jason were with two different studios. Considering the monsters that Universal has access to, they could always do some other classic monsters. But I think that many people, if you are on board with this, will probably be down to see Candyman versus Chucky explored seeing charles lee ray versus Candyman, I, i'm not against that um but we'll see if any of this actually comes to fruition i'm actually just waiting to see if we get that chucky season three announcement that's what i'm waiting for and if not what is going to be the next steps for this franchise because clearly they are not done they still have intent to continue forward even if the show is not renewed so we'll see what happens but what type of chucky crossover if any would you guys like to see let me know down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and you miss a video in the description i'll have links to my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video